Welcome to the quick start guide for the Altus APS-3 receiver and Carlson Serve CE field data collection software. We'll begin by putting the batteries in the APS-3 receiver. There's only one direction the batteries can go into the receiver. Battery goes in, housing snaps in place, same thing. Battery goes in, housing snaps in place. These are two lithium ion hot swappable batteries. To turn the receiver on, click the power button on the front of the receiver and the lights will come on. Moving across the panel, your first light is the Bluetooth light. This light will illuminate blue, showing that you have a Bluetooth connection to the data collector. The second light on the receiver is the RTK light, indicating with an orange flash that you're receiving RTK corrections from the base. The very center light here is the power light telling you the receiver is turned on, followed by the green flashing light, which is telling me I'm receiving satellites. This will initialize as a very rapid flash, and then as the satellites are acquired, the, the pace of the flashing will slow down. The final light on the receiver will be a red solid light. This will indicate that you're recording or logging raw data from the receiver onto the SD card. The SD card is built into the receiver, stored in the back. Here's a GSM SIM card slot, and then the slot for my SD card. Anytime I'm logging raw data, the raw data will be stored to that SD card. Now we'll switch over to ServeCE. I'm running ServeCE on an Allegro CX. So what we'll do is we'll launch ServeCE from the desktop. We can continue the last job we were working on or select a new file. I'll do a new file and I'll call it Altus APS3 Setup. This will be stored in the C drive under the data folder. I'll verify all the settings are the way I want with the biggest setting on the system screen being my projection. I can choose from the list or I can edit the projections by adding predefined selecting my datum and then telling it which projection to use. Once selected I hit the green check mark and that projection will be added to my list. Projections can be deleted by highlighting them and clicking the delete key. I'm going to continue without connecting and for the first time you connect to your receiver I recommend you do that. We'll go to the Equipment menu, select Option 3, GPS Rover, and apply the settings for our APS-3. So our manufacturer is Altus, the model is the APS-3. Under the Comms tab, we'll verify that we're using Bluetooth or cable. In our case, we'll Bluetooth connect using the socket device. I'll click on the utilities to the right of socket. If my device is not in the list, I would tell it to find. Carlson uses the phrase find receiver. However, this would be find any Bluetooth device. Once the li list is populated, I highlight the device I want and select it. Click the Bluetooth icon to establish a link between the data collector and the Bluetooth device. My receiver antenna type is the APS-3. I'm going to use a fixed 2 meter rover pole, so I'll do 2M for 2 meter, and the program will automatically convert it to feet, an elevation mask of 10, and a refresh posi position refresh rate of 5 hertz, 2 hertz, or 1 hertz. Under the RTK tab, I tell it which type of communication device I'll be using. 
The APS-3 comes standard with an internal GSM rate modem and an internal UHF radio. You also have the option to connect to other external communication devices. I'm going to be using an internal GSM and I'm going to connect to an Intrip network. I'll click the utilities to the right of Intrip to establish my network settings. Once I plug in my IP address and my port, I key in my username and password and click OK. I'll select OK for the base is loaded. And then if I needed to change this under the uh, Leica bases, I'll select the particular message or uh, single base that I'd like to use. I'll hit OK. Once I receive the message that says I've established a uh, successful connection, I want to look at two things. First and foremost, I want to look at the lights on the receiver. The blue light obviously means I'm getting the Bluetooth connection. The light next to that is the orange RTK light. The RTK light tells me that I'm receiving corrections from the base. The other thing I want to look at back here inside of SurfCE is I want to go to option number seven, monitor sky plot, and I want to look at the information that's displayed here. First and foremost, my status. I want to make sure my status says fixed. The number of satellites is given, my latency is displayed, as well as my dot values, horizontal dot, G dot, the standard deviations, both horizontal and vertical. One of the things that's been added to CE in the newer versions is GPS clock time shown on the far right side above the reset RTK button. So these are all indicators to me that uh, of what's happening. Inside of CE, as far as the status goes, I'm looking for a couple of different things. One, fixed means I'm fixed. I'm getting corrections, I'm processing those, everything is good. Float means I'm getting information but Something is preventing me from fixing. I don't have enough satellites. Maybe in the case of a network, I've gone too far on the outer perimeter of the network, uh, and, and I just can't acquire a fix, or maybe it's going to take some time to calculate. Autonomous typically tells me that I'm not getting some kind of communication. And then the last is DGPS or WAS, which tells me there is no communication going on at all, and all I'm receiving is simply straight satellite information. One of the things I want to look at here under the ref in Monitor Sky Plot is the ref tab. Under the ref tab, it shows me which base I'm connected to and how far I am from that base. The other things, Sat View, for example, shows me my sky view. Uh, that shows me the satellite coverage that I see. One of the things that's been added is a uh, representative sun position uh, shown by the S here. Uh, the other things are my satellites, GPS, GLONASS, SBAS, and then anything with a slash shown through it is not being used. If I wanted to use or not use individuals, I could double click on the cross here and that brings up my satellite display. I can turn satellites on or off depending on which ones I want or don't wish to see. We can close out a monitor sky plot. Now we're ready inside of SurfCE to actually begin storing points. From the survey menu, select option number one, store points. At the top of the screen, you'll notice your status, fix, float, autonomous, DGPS, was. And at the very bottom, you'll notice your standard deviations, your quality, the position. On the right, letters, S is for store point, A is to average a number of readings, O is to do an offset, C is to configure the settings for GPS, 
And the very last icon is my monitor sky plot, the same thing we were just looking at. 